Hello everyone, it is April from Getting Hooka With It. I stumbled on a video very recently by GK Reads. Um, I'm going to link her channel in the description box below because I love her so much. Her name is Grace. And she was inspired by Emma from Drinking By Michelle to do this video. And the whole point of this video is to go through books where you read one thing by an author and then you just started buying or wanting to read all of the rest of the things by that author. So let's get into it. Now the rules essentially are that the author has had to have written three books or more and you can only have read one of them and then wanted to read all the rest. So let's dive in. First, let's talk about A Good Marriage by Kimberly McCrate. I read this, I think in the spring, on audio, and I really liked it. This is about a lawyer, a female lawyer, who gets a call one day from an old college buddy of hers who is in jail on trial, essentially, for having killed his wife. Did he do it? Did he not do it? She ends up defending him. And it is the story of their history. And it's the story of the history of his wife. You get her perspective as well. Um, I loved it. I really enjoy her writing style so much. So the character development, the character development, that is such a key for me to enjoy a good thriller, I need to be invested in the characters. And I was totally invested in these characters. Luckily, I've ha I have two more of her books on my shelves. I've got Where They Found Her, which um, is about, uh, I think, an infant that is found dead in the woods. And we follow a journalist who had herself lost her own child um, and she is trying to get to the bottom of what happened to this infant. It sounds really heartbreaking. Um, yeah, I keep not wanting to pick this up because I know it's going to break my heart and like fuel anxiety, but maybe I should just bite the bullet. Bite the bullet? Where did that saying come from anyway? Um, maybe I should just get to it. And then I also have Reconstructing Amelia, also by Kimberly McCrate, and this is about a woman whose teenage daughter um, jumps from the top of her school and it's ruled a suicide um, but she thinks that this was not a suicide whatsoever. She knows her daughter um, and she's trying to get to the bottom of what happened to her daughter. So yeah, I would love to read more Kimberly McCrate after reading A Good Marriage. I really, really enjoyed it. Next up is Tayari Jones. I read An American Marriage and adored it. It is such an important story about how incarceration can impact a marriage. And this is about a marriage in which um, the, the man in this marriage, Roy, is wrongfully convicted of raping a white woman, even though he didn't do that at all. Um, he was with his wife the entire night. And everyone knows that he didn't do it, but he goes to prison and it is about what happens to their marriage. It's really, um, I don't know if heartbreaking is the right word. It's maddening. It shows the complexity of incarceration. And I don't think, and you know, I don't think enough people think about what happens to the families and the marriages of people who are incarcerated and this definitely dives into that it was so good Tashima recently bought me Silver Sparrow which is so exciting um, so I have this on my shelves now and this is about two sisters who don't really know about each other I don't think um, and their father is a bigamist and he has like a public family and a private family. 
and it is about them learning about each other and the secret getting out. And then she also wrote Leaving Atlanta that I desperately want to read and that one is about a serial killer in the 80s or the 70s in Atlanta who was preying upon black children. Now this is based on a true story and I think Tiari Jones, if I'm not mistaken, lived in Atlanta at this time. So it's not autobiographical, but it comes from some experience. It just sounds so good. So yeah, I want to read anything and everything by Tayari Jones, that's for sure. Next is Colson Whitehead. I read The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead this year. And man, this author can pack a punch. Um, I have lent it to one of my dear friends, Sandra. Um, who's reading it and it's a short book and I can't believe that he was able to make me care so much about a character in such a short period of time like that is masterful storytelling I think this is just over 200 pages and this is the story of Elwood who is a black boy living in um, the 1960s and he is uh, sent to a reformatory school called the Nickel Academy. And there he experiences all sorts of abuse. Um, all of the boys, especially the black boys, um, experience terrible, terrible abuse. And it is about um, racism and it's just, it was, unbelievable um, and I have luckily the Underground Railroad on my shelves but I want to read all of his work now um, zone one I think is another one there were quite a few the intuitionist is another one I'm quite interested in I just need him in my life he is a gorgeous writer and yeah this one um, the Underground Railroad is about a world in which the Underground Railroad is real, like it's an actual railroad, and it um, it takes place in the 1800s during slavery, and we follow one um, woman who is enslaved, and she is trying to get away. Uh, it sounds so good. I just, I need him in my life forever. He's amazing. Now this next author, I bought like, everything she's done practically very nearly um so i read as bright as heaven by susan meissner which is a historical fiction book about the spanish flu now i read this just as covid was starting i don't think at the time i realized how expansive and devastating it was going to be um, but this allowed me to kind of work through a lot of emotions because we follow a family who moves to Philadelphia to live with an uncle, essentially, who is um, an undertaker. He, he works at a funeral home. He owns and works at a funeral home. And then people start dying from the Spanish flu. I think that I think Philadelphia was quite hard hit at that time. And we follow this family and they they actually end up taking in a little boy who was um, essentially orphaned and it is about major grief this explores grief in such an amazing way I just I really loved it and so guess what I did I ended up getting the last year of the war which is World War II historical fiction. All of this is historical fiction, so I'm gonna stop saying that. Um, and this follows two girls who are essentially um, stuck at a concentration camp or work camp in the US. One of them is Japanese American and the other um, is a girl whose father had ties to Hitler or Nazi sympathies. It sounds, it sounds so good. So I got that. And then I got uh, A Bridge Across the Ocean, which takes place right after World War II. Um, and it follows several women who decide to get on the Queen Mary, a boat, 
um, to be re reunited with their American husbands. And I think only one gets off the boat on the other side. What? Like, I, I need to know. I also need to know what happens in The Secrets of a Charmed Life. This follows um, two young women. I think one of them is actually a child and one of them is a teenager and they're sisters and it's the 1940s and they're meant to go um, to the countryside to escape London um, but I think they're separated and it goes from there. I just yes yes and finally <laughs> see I'm not joking sometimes you get you get one good book and you're just like I will have them all please and thank you and last but not least is A Fall of Marigolds also by Susan Meissner um, and this goes back and forwards in time and I love that you guys know how I love that in this you follow two people one woman in the present day um, it's September 2011 and she is um, working through her grief because her husband died in the World Trade Center um, catastrophe and she's trying to move on she is somehow linked I think from a scarf to a woman in September 1911 and um, her husband I think um, dies in the triangle shirt waist fire and they're connected somehow through a scarf yes please. okay I've got one more author I want to talk about and that is Essie Adugan um, I feel like I'm saying her name wrong I read um, Washington Black by her and oh my goodness what a powerful Canadian black author um, in that book you're following a young black boy named Washington Black and um, he is enslaved and um, the brother of the slave owner um, does not hold the same beliefs as his brother and decides to essentially whisk away this little black boy and take him away from um, this plantation that he's lived on his whole life and he's a bit of an adventure uh it was just it explored performative allyship in a really interesting way and their relationship was very fascinating to me so of course i want to read everything by her um so she's most well known for half-blood blues which is um historical fiction world war ii historical fiction about a group of jazz musicians um, who are black and their experience living through World War II. I think it takes place in France. It just sounds really good. I think one of them goes missing. I yes, I think she also wrote The Second Life of Samuel Tyne. And I think that one is about a black family and for some reason he's afraid of his daughters. I could be wrong about that. It's a family drama store. I, I just, I want them all. I just, I need them in my life. I do, I do. So let me know in the comments below, do you have this issue as well? Or maybe it's a wonderful problem to have, but do you do this where you read one book by an author and then you're like, I need it all. And you just start accumulating and you can't help yourself it's it's such a joy it's such a joy I've done this with like Kate Atkinson and oh my gosh so many amazing authors who have become favorite authors and this is why it's always good to try new things and try new authors because you never know when you're going to find like a new favorite uh, I hope you guys are doing really well. In the description box below, um, I have my Goodreads page, my Amazon wish list, my Instagram page, my Patreon page. That's it from me. I hope you're doing well and I'll talk with you soon.
Bye, guys.